these things in Jesus' mighty, matchless name. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, welcome. Welcome to the family church. Welcome to our online experience. My name is Pastor Ted Winsley. I'm so glad that you got up. How about that? That's the first. Who's glad that you woke up today? Amen. Come on. Can we put our life right now in proper perspective? You got up. Come on. You got so many things. Oftentimes we have so many things to complain about, but there's one thing that dead people can't complain about. Dead, so I mean, a dead man can't complain, but somebody that is alive and well can choose whether to complain or be grateful and thankful that I got up. Somebody shout, I got up. Glory to God. Hey, guys, I'm excited about this word. We are on part three. Is this part three or part two? We're on, we're on part three. No, we're on part three of the entire series. We're on part two of a, of a, of a thought process. Um, but, but how many, I don't know what part we're on on, on, on the series of sting, uh, uh, on the series of, of the foxes. If, for the past three or four months, amen, we, we, we've been working on, hey, guys, because this is the year of breaking ground. And how many of you know if you're going to break ground, you got to punch something in the face? Come on, not somebody. I said something. Some of y'all got excited. Oh, I've been waiting to hit him. No, no, you haven't. If, if we're going to break ground, if we're going to become, if we're going to emerge, if we're going to build and plant the way God has called us, we got to deal with those things that have been holding us back. We got to deal with those things that have been stopping us from progressing. And we've been talking about five foxes, and now we're on fox number six. Uh, and, and, and now fox number six has become a series. We'll probably be here for another couple of three more weeks. Who knows? Um, but, but how many of you know we're going to deal with this thing that's been stopping you from being who God has called you to be? And so, so, so today, um, we're, we're back. This is part three. We're, we're back in, in our, our Stingy series. The series is called Stingy. Somebody say Stingy. <laughs> and what's the subtitle? Are you happy now? And how many of you know that, that, that that's really, that, that's what the devil kind of torments us when, when, we, when we find ourselves caught with this fox? And, and, and how many of you know, so, so we're going to find out that this fox doesn't just hang out with you because this is the last fox. This is the fox that bites you. And when you get bit by the spirit of stingy, um, even though you, you, you've hoarded or you've held on or you've tried to maintain, still that, 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 that stingy fox is almost tormenting you. And on the inside, you hear him say, yeah, you held on to that. Yeah, you fought for that. Yeah, you stole for that. Yeah, yeah you lied. You cheated for that. Yeah, you got it. But guess what? Are you happy now? And so, so today we're, we're, we're in, as I said, part three, um, and we're going to get a revelation. Um, we're we're, we're going to begin to start uh, locating that fox that bit us. And how many know when you locate it, then you start biting back? Somebody say, somebody say I'm tired of getting bit. <laughs> somebody, say, somebody, somebody say, once I get tired of getting bit, I start biting back. I don't know about you, and don't nobody call Dyfus, but I have a two-year-old, and, and he's, I have a two-year-old grandson, and, and uh, probably about a couple months, he, he discovered biting, okay? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. He discovered biting. I don't know. He just, he, uh, he just felt like it, it was empowering. If you don't do nothing, something that he wants you, and he'll look you, and it's funny, he'll look you right in your face and smile and then bite you. How many of you know he doesn't, my, my grandson doesn't bite me anymore? You want to know why? Because I bite back. Come on, talk to me. I know, like Pastor Ted, I'm calling. I don't, I don't care. You call Dyfus. My, my grandson don't bite no more. Because how many of you know that, that something that feels like that it can bite you and there will be no repercussions will keep biting? Come on, talk to me. But hey, 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 come on now. We, we found out that when you got a bully, you got to bully the bully. And, 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 and so, so today, I didn't leave it, I didn't break the skin, um, but, but, but today we're going to find out that, that once we're able to understand where this fox is, what keep, what, what's been biting me, we're going to learn how to bite back. And so, so today we're going to get into this. Um, uh, if, if you look, our, our subtitle, well, let's just jump in here, Proverbs chapter 11, I'm excited. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 23 to 25, let's jump into this. It says what? It says the who? The godly. What can they do? They can look forward to a reward. Come on, somebody just shout out if you know that you're godly. Come on, talk to me. Amen. See, see, here's what I want us to do, guys. I'm excited. I got a live audience. I'm excited because I want us to, when we read the word, believe it's prophetic. Believe that what I'm reading, God is speaking to me, and this is going to happen. How many of you know you would read the word more if you believed it 
when you read it. And so watch this. So here's what the word is prophesying to you. It says what? The godly can look forward to a reward. Come on. It says here, it says what? While the wicked can expect only judgment. Come on. And so you got to find yourself, what, what side are you on? And how many know that that, that word wicked in the Hebrew um, is actually for the word twisted? How many of you know we've all been twisted before? Come on, talk to me. In other words, we weren't straight. If you ain't straight, you're twisted. And, and so you decide what you're going to be. Okay, let's read. It goes on. Next, next verse says, is what? Read with me. Here it goes. It says what? Give freely. And what happens? And become more wealthy. Are you here? How many of you know that when you give, you become? Woo! Come on, talk to me. We're going to get into this. It says what? Give freely and become more wealthy. And some of you, how many of you know that the, the lowest form of wealth is money? Come on, talk to me. Because some of y'all heard, well, how can I? How can I give freely and I, how can I give away money and have money? Now, how many of you know that the lowest form of prosperity, lowest form of wealth is money? Uh, higher, you've heard me say this, higher than money is faith. How many of you know you can do more with your faith than you can with money? Come on, talk to me. Uh, higher than, because watch this, because when you're operating in faith, you're operating in faith towards God. That's what faith is. Faith is, is you exercising your belief towards your source. Come on, talk to me. And how many of you know higher than faith, I've heard you heard me say this, is grace. Great, caris, caris, or, or grace is, is an endowment of the faculty and the empowering presence of God that literally it, it, has, it has an impact on in and on your life. So when you are grace, when you are caris, you're not towards God, it's with God. So whenever you're operating in grace, you're doing something with God. How many of you know, how many of you know doing something with God is higher than doing something for God? Are you hearing me? And so, so how many of you know that you can get things accomplished, more things accomplished with his grace than you can just with faith, and, and you, absolutely you can more than just with money. Is this helping anybody already? I'm just flowing. And so, so we said that there's, there's money. It's the lowest form of wealth. Higher than money is faith. Higher than faith is when you are graced because you're in faith. And now you're not just doing it towards God. You're doing it with God. God's working with you. But how many of you know that there is a higher form of wealth, and it's called peace, which also means sovereignty? How many of you know that when you're in the peace of God, God can be sovereignly sovereign. And when God is sovereignly sovereign, God starts saying stuff like, I can do what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it. And so how many of you know that when we operate in the highest form of prosperity or the highest form of wealth, God is able to do whatever he wants to do in your life. Watch this. And I would so much rather God bless me the way he wants than the way I thought. How are we doing? So, so here we go. So it says here, we give freely and we become more wealthy. Read with me. Y'all thought I was making up this, this, this series called Stingy. Come on, I'm a biblical man. It says what? But what? It says what? Be who? Be stingy. Come on. Is that in the word? Y'all seen that in the word? It says what? Be stingy. And what happens to the stingy? You lose everything. This is so good because many of us don't understand that, that we, we talked about this, that stingy is not an action, it's an attitude. So, 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 so when our heart's posture is stingy, we actually find ourselves in a position where we lose everything. Somebody's saying, is that biblical? How many know that the Bible says that a double-minded man, come on, talk to me, or a double-minded woman, what's the Bible say, is unstable in all of their ways. Come on. And then it says, and think not that person that they will receive anything from God. Come on, I'm biblical. So, so, so you might say, so you're telling me if I'm stingy, God won't do anything for me? No, that's not what I said. You can't receive anything from him. It's a difference. How many of you know God's done everything? It's done. God has done everything for you. But when you are in a stingy position of heart, when you are in a stingy attitude, and we're going to find out in a minute because y'all always stuck on money, that how many of you know we're not just talking about being stingy physically with your time, your talent, or your treasure. We're also being stingy emotionally. Come on, talk to me. Where you won't forgive, where you won't love, where you won't open up, where you'd rather give money than forgive somebody. You'd rather give money than have a conversation with somebody. You'd rather give money than share your faults or your flaws. Come on, talk to me. And so it says here, give freely and become more wealthy. But what? But it says here, but, but go ahead and be stingy. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose everything. Come on, here we go. It says what? But what? The generous, come on, will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Come on. I'm, I'm just sharing with you guys. I'm prophesying over your life. God's trying to share with you your real position. 
God wants to share with you your real attitude. How many of you know that you were created to be, by God to be like God? Come on, talk to me. And it says here, it says the generous will prosper. And watch this. And those who refresh others, how many of you know that the generous refresh others? Jesus said it this way. He said, those who will be great amongst you will be your servants. Come on, talk to me. In other words, those who will be great among you will be people who give to you. Come on, y'all didn't hear me. But in order to give, you have to receive so you can give. How many of you know that, that that's why when you're generous, you prosper, and those who refresh others, watch this. How many, how many of you know that, that when you're a giver, you'll never be broke? Come on. Did, did you know that? When you give your time, your talent, when you give your treasure, when you give of your heart, come on, talk to me. You'll never be broke because you got seed in the ground. Come on, talk to me. See, some of, you know, some of you don't realize that there are, there are people who got saved because you were generous. How I many of you know that there, there are people, who, there are people who, who didn't kill themselves because you gave them a kind word? Are you hearing me? Come on, let's read. It goes on. It says here, it says, today we're going to continue to focus Watch this, and we're going to expose and uncover. Here we go, fox number six. We saw what fox number six was. What's fox number six? It's called stingy. And, and if you remember, we learned that, watch this, that, that when we are being emotionally, or we learned that, that we are being emotionally or physically stingy. Like I just said, that, that, watch this, but when we are emotionally or physically stingy, the real sin is not of omission or commission. Omission is what you did. Commission is what you didn't do. But how many of you know when you're being stingy, it ain't about either one. It's not about what you did. It's not about what you didn't do. It's about you didn't believe. It's about unbelief. It's about the fact that, you know what? I didn't trust God to do what he told me to do. I didn't trust God to not do what he told me not to do. And so, so, so we had to realize, and that's why I said that this is a fox, because we learn and we're going to learn that, that foxes are areas of fear that are masked with other things. So, so uh, e even oftentimes, some of us, you know, we think about being stingy. He's stingy. She's stingy. Really, he is fearful and she is fearful. And so, so watch this. So we learn that foxes, as I said, they're fears that enter our heart and they're masked as other things. But watch this. And y'all remember, we've said this in the past, but whatever we tolerate, it will infiltrate. And so if you allow a fox to, li to, to, to live or to be in your proximity, it's going to find a hole. Oh, you didn't hear me. Come on now. Hey, see, so, some, of you, some of you saw a bunch of foxes around and then you thought they left. No, they didn't leave. They just found holes. Come on, they, they, they didn't leave, they just found a home. <laughs> they didn't leave, they just found a place to live. They found a place to dwell. They found a place to dominate. Come on, talk to me. See, see where there are no foxes, there'll be no holes. Where there are holes, there will be foxes. Are you hearing me? And so watch this. So, so, so today, it's time to destroy the holes so foxes must flee. How we doing? It says here, it says today we're going to chase away a fox as we expose. Here we go. This is what we're going to do today. I'm going to give you two, but there are more. Watch this. As we're going to expose the reasons why we're afraid to be generous. Um, as I said, our subtitle, watch this, our subtitle. So how many of you know that here at the Family Church we have notes? Everybody got your notes here? Everybody got your notes? If you're watching, just press the button. On Facebook, on our, our website, um, uh, I don't know, maybe even they might have it on YouTube, but you can press the button and you can uh, go to a place where your notes will be. And how many of you know the reason why we have notes is because what? Because we got homework. Oh. Amen. And y'all really got homework. So, so watch this. And if you look at your notes, um, the, the subtitle is called what? Help. What? What? Help. I want to be generous. Watch this. But, but I think I got... But I think I got bit, part two. Come on, talk to me. And, and, and look, look at this video for those of you that are looking. So, 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 so you say, it says, it says help. Go ahead, play it again. It says help, help, help. I want to be generous, but, but I, I think I got bit. <laughs> and, and, and we're going to realize and we're going to find out that, that, watch this, and it's funny, even that little video, the lady thought she was being generous. Here, little fox. Here, let me take care of you. Here, little fox that I think is not a fox. I, I think it's a dog. I think it's a pet. Come on. You ain't, supposed to, you ain't supposed to have your hand out when a demon is around. Come on, talk to me. How, how many of you know if you got your hand out or you have your heart open, you're going to get bit. 
And so today we're going to find out that, hey, help me, God. Help me, pastor. Help me, brother. Help me, sister. I really want to be generous. And how many of you know the reality is is everybody wants to be generous, but I'll also tell you this, that the number one, um, the, the number one instinct, so when we talk about instinct, we're talking about your flesh, okay? So uh, when we talk about desire, we're talking about your spirit. Your spirit has desires. Your flesh has instincts. Y'all hear me? So, so the num- the num- watch this. The number one desire of your heart is to serve God. The number one desire of your heart is to be generous. The number one instinct of your flesh is called self-preservation. Come on, talk. Y'all know this. Come on. The, the number one instinct is, you know what? If don't nobody go home, I'm going to make it home. If don't nobody eat, I'm going to eat. Come on, talk to me. And, and, and so, so, so this is why we have to understand that, that there's a part of us, there, if our flesh, um, if this hole is not closed, there'll be a fox in that hole, and there'll be a fox that is stingy trying to protect itself. Uh, and, and actually, in the process of protecting itself, it'll actually leave no room for God, okay? And so, 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 so we're honest with ourselves, and we're going to find out um, Two reasons today, and we'll do some more next time you see me next week, but we're going to find out two reasons today as the help. I, I want to be generous, but I think I got, I think I got bit. That joke, I think I got rabies now but, but because I keep getting bit even though I want to be generous. So how many of you know in the areas that you get bit, you need to quit? Y'all, y'all hear me? Somebody say, and I, I'm anointed because y'all are here. So, somebody say, in the areas that I get bit, I need to quit. And let me know if you quit, he ain't going to bite you. Here we go. So watch this. So here's a, little, here's a little review, and then we'll jump in. So here's our review. It says here, it says, what read me? It says, stingy is the fear of not having enough. It is the attitude, remember I told you, of giving or spending time, money, or emotions reluctantly. And I put that in there because y'all keep thinking about money, but you don't realize that, that, that a person who's generous gives everything. Come on, talk to me. A person who's generous will give their time. A person who's generous will give of their finances. A person who's generous will give of their heart, will give of their emotions. And remember, we found out that you can not only be stingy physically with stuff, but you could also be stingy emotionally. You could be that person that, you know what, I don't just, I don't bang with everybody. Praise God that God doesn't say that about you. Come on, we'd be, in, we'd be in trouble if God says, you know, there's a certain type of people I bang with and others I don't. Those are the ones who are in hell. No, that's, that's not how God sees us, right? That's not how God sees us. And so, so, so it's important to realize, wait a second, you must have got bit in that area that you're stingy emotionally. You must have got, you must have somebody broke your little heart. Come on, talk to me. So, 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 so somebody, somebody hurts you in that area. And so, so today we got to realize that these are fears where we got bit and now we have an attitude where we are reluctant to spend our time, our money, and our emotions. How many of you know that you can be a giver but still be stingy? Come on. That, that's why I need you to understand. That's why this is a fox. Because some of you say, I'm married and I'm in a relationship. You know, I ain't stingy. How many of you know relationships expose the fox? Uh, that's why some people ain't ready for marriage. Look straight. Come on, singles. Any singles? I can't see you. Any singles up in here? So some of you actually aren't ready because you're not ready to get exposed because when you get exposed, instead of responding, you react. Instead of res- I, I, I know people that just got married and now they want to get divorced. Ain't nobody cheat. Come on, I'm looking at you. Come on. Ain't nobody cheat. But, but emotionally, you're like, I'm miserable. You want to know why? Because I realized I married somebody with a hole, and in the hole, there's a fox. And in the process, I found, see, here's one thing you got to realize is dysfunction. Don't be mad at me. Dysfunction gravitates to dysfunction. So right now, as you're thinking about your husband or your wife or your boo or your booette, watch this. And you're thinking, yeah, man, that's it. Pastor Ted preached that word because I done met her and I found out I met him. I found out he had a fox. But guess what? Foxes attract foxes. Come on, look straight. See, because one reason, I'm, I'm going to go there. Can I go there? One reason why you didn't smell the fox poop because you smell like fox poop. Come on, talk to me. So, so, so watch this. So, so your stuff, you, 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 can't, you focus so much on their stuff. Watch this, because you can't smell your stink, because your stink smell like their stink. Y'all hear me? 
And so, so this is important that relationships, watch this, actually expose foxes. Now, how many of you know, I teach this here at the family church that what we call a marriage, I mean, what we call a relationship, God calls a marriage. How many of you know, watch this, and, and that's why you need to understand this, that if you desire to be in a relationship with God, the moment that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus is saying, let's find these foxes in your life. Let's find these areas where you're stingy. Come on, talk to me. Let's find these areas where you are reluctant to give your time. We are reluctant to give your emotion. We are reluctant to give of your finances. Come on, talk to me. Because watch this, because these foxes will ruin your relationship. And some of you think everything's good with me and God until he asks you to give some time. Until he asks you to give your heart. How many of you know the Bible says, watch this, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, and then love your neighbor the way you love yourself. But how, how many of you, how many of you are, are I'm going to say, how many of you suck at, at loving your neighbor because you don't love you? And you don't love you because you haven't received the love that the Father has for you. Is this making any sense? And that's why you're stingy and the relationship is exposing it. Is this making any sense? Come on, talk to me. Let's go. It says here, it says generosity. It's the opposite of stingy. It is the attitude that, watch this. Come on, somebody. It looks to freely give wherever there are needs. See, see, when you're generous, watch this. All you can think of is I've got too much. I can't spend all of this. I can't express all of this. I can't hold on to all. It's too much. I got to find somebody who's in need. Is it? Hey, hear me. I got to find someone who's in need. How many of you know, watch this, that, that people don't even realize that this whole thing is about love. Did you know this whole thing is about love? Do you know that the Bible says that God doesn't just have love, he is love? And the only way that love is satisfied is when love has an opportunity to express itself to someone or something that can truly receive it. Are you hearing me? And, and so how many of you know this really is a love thing? For God so loved the world that he gave. So, so the only way that you're ever going to be satisfied is when you are a giver, not a taker. How are we doing? Is this all right? Come on, come on. Let's keep going. It says here. So, so, so here we go. So watch this. We're going to talk about some fox bites. I got two of them. I got two for you today, and we'll come back, and we'll give you some more. Y'all all right? So, so somebody, somebody say, I'm tired of being fox bitten. Somebody say, I'm ready to bite back. How many of you know you can't bite back if you don't know where you've been bit? All right? <laughs> Y'all, you, you dancing, but don't know that you've been bit. That's why you're doing the dance, because you've been bit. Come on, here we go. I'm having fun. But here we go. So fox bites. It says, watch this. I got bit, and I'm afraid to be generous because. I'm going to give you two reasons, and we're out of here. We'll come back next week. You ready? So here we go. So here we go. So number one. Somebody say fox bite number one. Let's read. It says what? It, it, say, it says, it says I, 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 I got bit, and, and I want to be generous, but, but I don't because what? Because I what? Because I see being generous or giving. How many of you know that generous and giving are the same thing? I see being generous or giving. Read with me what? As a loss instead of a gain. Come on, talk to me. See, see I, I, I want to give, but I got bit. And I, and I got bit because cause, cause I see being generous, I see being giving as a loss instead of a gain. And how many of you know every time you hear God tell you to give, you have this image of, of, of this picture right here with your money on a ledge. Oh, my stuff is blown away. Oh, my. Because <laughs> all you hear, you hear, you hear an opportunity to lose instead of an opportunity to sow. How are we doing? Come on, let's read. It says here, let's get into this. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And for these two, these two bites, uh, we're going to look at, at, at a certain man's life. Are y'all ready with this? Come on, here we go. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Let's read. It says what? And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one who doing what? There came one what? See, see somebody underline that. Because how many of you know that we run when we, when we think we're going to get what we want? Come on, talk to me. Y'all, y'all ran here. Y'all, y'all run to the mall. You know, you run to your girl's house. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Or run to your boo's house. Uh-oh. Come on, I'm looking at you. So, 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 it says, so running means that you're excited. Come on, talk to me. Running means that you're expecting. Watch this. And running means that you're joyful about something. How are we doing? So it says here. So, so we, we got to check this out. It says what? There came one running. And then what he did? And he kneeled to him. And he asked him. And what he said? He said, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Come on. So, so here's a man. He's actually known as the rich young ruler. Okay. And, and I'll tell you the reason why we know him as a rich young ruler. You want to know why? Because we don't know his name. Come on, talk to me. How, how, how many of you know that stingy will stop you from being recognized in history? Come on, come on, talk to me. 
Stingy will stop you be, from being recognized. And you will see in a minute that, that we were supposed to know this man's name. How many of you know there are people that are supposed to know your name, but they don't because you were stingy? Come on, let's keep going. So it says here. So here's the question. What did he ask him? What, 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 did, he, what did he come running to Jesus for? He says, what? what shall I do that I can do what? That I can inherit what? Eternal life. So if that's your paper or if you're watching this, underline eternal life. Because he came wanting eternal life, right? He came trusting Jesus for what? For eternal life. Let's read. Let's go on. It says what? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? So first of all, let me understand who am I talking to? In other words, Jesus said, who's you? You know what I mean? Who you? Who you is? Come on, talk to me. Because how many of you know, sometimes, watch this, if you don't qualify who you're speaking to, what I'm about to say is going to hurt you, not help you. Are, are you understanding me? Because guess what? If you're a child, we can't have an adult conversation. Mm, come on, talk to me. If you're a child, we can't have an adult conversation because I'm going to wind up exposing you something that you're not ready to do. Are y'all hearing me? And so that's why he asked me. He said, whoa, whoa, wait a second. You use the, the heavenly term. You use good. Let me see if you understand. He said, and Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? There's none good, or there's none good but one that is God. So I'm trying to figure out, do you know God? Come on, talk to me. Because how many of you know just because you call me pastor don't mean that you know God? Come on, just because you're in this church, come on, look straight, don't mean that you know God. Hey, what, j just because you came running, come on, a lot of people run. Everybody with feet can run. Come on, so just because you came running doesn't mean that you know or that you want, come on, talk to me, God. Now, there are people that know God but want from him. That's different. That you don't really know him. Watch this. You're a user. Come on, talk to me. How are we doing? Is this all right? Can y'all handle this? Come on. Come on, let's keep going. It goes on. It says here, and that's why he had to qualify. Verse 19, it says what? Thou knowest the commandments. Watch, he said. He says what? Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Don't defraud nobody. Honor thy father and thy mother. Come on. And he says what? And he answered, he said unto him, Master. Come on, give this religious term. Bishop. Watch this. Master, all these things have I observed from my youth. I was born, born again. Come on, talk to me. I've always, I've always been doing this. Here we go. He says, verse 21. It says, here we go. And I love Jesus because Jesus, watch this, he going to find the fox. Come on, talk to me. Jesus, Jesus going to find the fox. That's why, that's why you got to be a big boy and a big girl. Come on, you hear me? And that's why, I can be honest with you, some people don't like this kind of church because this kind of church, we're going to teach the word. I'm not, gonna, I'm not just going to whip you up into a frenzy. I, I might raise my voice. We might spit and dance, but, but it's because of the word. And so if you don't want the word, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, you're not going to like it here because you're not going to want to change because you either receive it or reject it. How many of you know? And so it says here, it says, then Jesus, bold, he, beholding him, and I love this. Look at this. It says, beholding him. What did he do? He loved him. You, you, you wonder what? Jesus had love for him. Watch this. Jesus saw his potential. Amen. Jesus saw who he really was. That's why Jesus wasn't going to lie to him. That's why Jesus wasn't going to say something that made him feel good. That's why Jesus wasn't going to say something to ensure that he came back to church next week. Guess what? I don't care if you come back to church next week because I'm just going to give you the truth. If you want the truth, the truth will bring you back. Come on, talk to me. Love will bring you back. Come on, talk to me. But, but if you want somebody to make you feel good... Uh, go ahead and click now. Go ahead and click off now. Come on, talk to me. Here we go. It says here. It says, and Jesus beholded him. He loved and he said to him, one thing. Somebody say one thing. One thing. It says, one thing thou lackest. And, and, and now this is really should be your prayer. So this is your homework assignment. You need to ask God, what's the one thing that's opened the door to this fox? What, what's the one thing that I'm lacking? What's the one thing that I am reluctant to do? Come on, talk to me, guys. It, and it, it ain't the one thing that you're doing. It's the one thing that you did but don't really want to do. Are y'all hear me? What, what, what's, the, what's the area, God, that I'm stingy at, that I'm reluctant to do? And he says, watch this. One thing that you lack is, come on, y'all, come on, get strong. It says what? Go thy way and sell whatsoever you have. Oh, shucky ducky. See, and when you study it, Jesus didn't say sell everything. He just said sell what you have that you can sell. <laughs> you don't hear me? See, because, I mean, you know, there's some stuff you can't sell. But, but he's saying, but there's some, he, what, what, what he was saying is, is I'm trying, I'm, I, I want to see, I, I, I'm testing you now. I want to see if you want to know me or you want from me. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Did you hear me? See, this is the test. This is the test. Do you want to be Lord? Y'all hear me say this all the time? Or do you want a Santa, Santa Claus? Do you want a Lord or do you want a sugar daddy? Come on, talk to me. 
See, because the test determines, do you want me or do you want from me? Come on, talk to me. Some, some of us are watching right now because you think that Jesus is a lucky rabbit's foot. He's not, and he's going to test to see whether you want something from him or you really want him. How are we doing? Here we go. He says, what? Then Jesus beholding him, he said, watch, I love you. He said, go your way, sell whatsoever thou hast. Some of you already, done, your heart done fell. He says, and give to the poor. And watch this. And then you'll have treasure in heaven. On, see, see, how many of you know that God, God's not trying to get you rich? He's trying to get you wealthy. Oh, you didn't hear me. Oh, you, you didn't hear me. See, see, God's not trying to get you rich. He's trying to get you wealthy. Now, guess what? You might experience riches in this lifetime as, as, you are, as you are walking in the wealth of God. But as Job said, he said, naked I came in here and naked I'm leaving. So, so guess what? what? What happened in between, it don't matter. Y'all hear me? And so Jesus is talking to a man who is rich and he's trying to make him wealthy. He said here, he said, sell what you have. Give it to the poor. Watch this. And then you're going to have treasure in heaven. Now, I need you to understand. I'm breaking this down as he's talking to me. See, the reason why he said, you're gonna have, I need you to have treasure in heaven. Watch this. And he says what? And come and take up your cross. Come on, watch this. And follow me. Jesus can only trust people who have treasure in heaven. So you didn't hear me. Because if you don't have your treasure in heaven, I can't trust you. You can't walk with uh, y'all. Don't hear me. You can't walk with me. You want to know why? Because you're always going to have an ulterior motive. You 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 ain't here for you 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 ain't here because you love me. We'll get in this next week. You're here because I gave you a fish sandwich. Y'all know something. Come on, come on. I, I mean, y'all remember that, that Jesus did that miracle. The Bible says Jesus did the miracle. He fed everybody with some loaves and some fish. He fed thousands of people. And then after he left, the Bible says they got on boats, and they was rowing and rowing, baby. They rowing, baby. And then they found him and said, Lord, Master, where were you? Where has you been? We were looking for you, Master. Master, we was looking for you. And, and, and Jesus said, no, you weren't looking for me. You, you got some fish sandwich crumbs around your mouth. He said, you don't really want me. You want me because I did a miracle. You want me because I fed you with the five lo with the loaves and the fish because you had a fish sandwich. You really don't want me. And so this is why Jesus said, look here, in order to follow me, I got to be at you. You, you got to pass the test. You have to connect to the source so you won't be a thief. Is this making sense? How are we doing? Is this all right? Isn't that what, and, and, is that and what it said in the scripture? So, so, so here's what he said. He said, watch this. He said, you need to have some treasure in heaven and then come and then take up your cross. And then I need you to follow me. Now, I, guys, I need you to understand the timing that this happened. Jesus was picking the 12. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. You, 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 study it. Jesus was selecting his disciples. He was selecting the people that would be in his intimate circle. There's a reason why we don't know his name, because he failed his test. Are, are, are you hearing me? Come on, let's read. It goes on. It says here. It says here. Here we go. It says what? Generosity and giving. What is it? It's a test of whether we what? Whether we believe on God and whether we put our trust in him or whether we trust money and we believe in ourselves. I need you to hear this. God asking you to be generous. Generous with what? Generous with your money. And I'll say money first because that's what you care about first. But, but also it's, it's greater than that. Will, will you be generous with your time? Will you generous, be generous with your attitude? Will you be generous with your emotions? But understand that generosity is always a test because it will always expose where your source is. Whether you believe that he is your source, whether you put your trust in him, or whether, watch this, or whether money is your source and you put your trust in you. Boo. How we doing? We all right? Come on. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Let's look at this. It says here, um, uh, verse, uh, uh, I'm going to prove it. It says what? And he was, well, look at this. So here's what happened. So, so Jesus tests him, right? And so here's what happened. Anybody, anybody ever take a test? I know it happened to me after I was pledging because I wasn't studying. And I, I remember I, right after I pledged, I came, it was a final. And I looked down at the test and, and watch this. It says what? And he was what? And he was sad at the same. Anybody ever say, you look at the test, I'm like, man, I am sad at what this says. Because I don't know, not, I am not ready to pass this test. See, see, how many of you know that when you're stingy and when someone gives you an opportunity to be generous, you sad at the saying. Mm, that's a sad saying. 
I wish you didn't say that. I mean, that's what a sad saying. A sad saying is a saying that the moment you hear it, on the inside, you might be smiling. You might even be getting your checkbook. You might even be getting ready to go do what they ask you to do. But on the inside, I'm sad at that saying. I wish he, I wish he ain't asked me to do it. I wish he ain't asked me to do it because I really don't want to be generous right now. I, I really want to hold on. I'm really stingy. I'm afraid that if I give this, it's going to be my last. So I'm sad at this saying. Y'all hear me? It says, and he was sad at the saying. And he went away. Come on, watch this. And he went away. See, we don't even know his name. He left. But watch this. He went away grieved. That word grieved, it actually means sorrowful because there was a death. Oh. See, you only grieve because something died. Oh, y'all hear me? You, you, you only grieve because something died. See, see, how many of you know, you want to know what died on the inside? His opportunity. His opportunity to trust God. His opportunity to go to another level, and he knew it. Are you hearing me? Because some of you are sad at the saying because you realize, ah, I ain't going to do that. Even, even, if I, even, even if it means that I lose this opportunity, uh, I'm sorry. Come on. Anybody ever just said, I, just, I, I guess I just got to take an L? Come on. Talk to me. That's fear. That's the fox. That's the fox saying, man, just go ahead and take an L because we sad at that saying because you know that you trust you instead of trusting God. And it says he was sad at the saying and he went away like something died. It says for he, why, 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 why was he sad at the saying? Why did he go away like something died? Because he had a lot of stuff. Bible said he had a lot of possessions. Watch this. They weren't possessions. They were possessions. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. See, how many of you know when, when you get bit, your possessions become possessions. You're possessed by the stuff that you think you have. No, it has you. Well, let's prove it. Okay, we'll get rid of it. Let's prove it. Walk away from it. Let's prove it. Bless somebody with it. Let's prove it. Tithe. Oh, I'm cussing, I'm cussing in church. Let's prove it. Give an offering. Let, let, oh, ha, ha, I hear that. Let's prove it. Serve. Oh, that's generosity. Let's read. It goes on. It says here, it says what? The rich young ruler was willing. Come on. I need y'all to read this with me. The rich young ruler was willing to trust Jesus with eternal life. Come on, come on stop. Do you remember? The he, he, Bible says he came running. He was happy. He was excited. And he said, Lord, what do I have to do to have eternal life? In other words, he said, God, I trust you to be saved. I trust you to make it to heaven. It says, watch this. But he was not willing to trust him with his money. He wasn't willing to trust him with his possessions. And guess what? So guess what? He was a hypocrite. He was a hypocrite. That word hypocrite means actor. See, see, there are people who are going to bust hell wide open that were at every church service. Now, don't hear me. There are people that are going to bust hell wide open. Some of you scared. Pastor, are you saying that I'm not, I'm not going to heaven because I won't give? Yes. <laughs> because you want to know what you won't give. You won't give them your heart. You won't give them your life. There are some of you, you think you're saved, but you're not generous. Oh, you know, How many of you know that generosity is a fruit of the Spirit? Generosity is proof that his blood is coursing through my veins. Is this making any sense? Some of us need to get born again because we're not. We're playing church. We're being religious. We're being hypocritical. We're going through the motions. But when the test comes, you not can't pass it, you won't pass. Because the rich young ruler was set up to pass the test, but because he got bit, he chose not to. Is this how, how we doing? Come on, the rich young ruler, he was willing to trust Jesus with eternal life, but he was not willing to trust him with his money or his possessions. Come on, let's go. Mark chapter 10, verse 23, 24. I'm going to get you through. Is, is anybody getting anything? Is this helping anybody? Come on, we're, we're going to get through this, and then we'll come back next week. But let's look at this. Mark chapter 10, verse 23, 24. It says what? And Jesus looked around about, and he said unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches, watch this, enter into the kingdom kingdom of God. He didn't say how hard is it for somebody who's wealthy. Wealth comes from heaven. He said how hard is it for people that got stuff, people that want stuff, people that need stuff, 
people that are chasing. So come on, some of you ain't got nothing, but you chasing it. Come on, talk to me. Some of you ain't got a penny, ain't got a pot. Come on, talk to me. You ain't got nothing, but you've, you have given up your life in the pursuit of it. And how many of you know, if, if you've given up your life in the pursuit of it, you're possessed. Mm. Here we go. He said, and he looked and he said, he said, man, how hard is it? How hardly shall they that they have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Come on, let's look at this. It says what? People who get what? Who get bit by the stingy, by stingy, see generosity and giving as a loss. Watch this. We are grieved. Watch this. And, and watch this. And, and, and we don't see it as a gain. You don't see <laughs> the rich young ruler missed that this was my opportunity to be wealthy. This was my opportunity to leave the natural and enter into the, watch this, not spirit, but enter into the supernatural. Do you realize that Jesus came to bring the super into the natural? You're supposed to, you're not just supposed to be spiritual, you're supposed to be supernatural. You're supposed to be in this world, but not of it. You're supposed to be here, but you're supposed to be leading. You're supposed to be here, but you're supposed to be the one with the money. You're supposed to be one with the control. You're supposed to be one with the influence. But how many of you know, watch this, if you're stingy and if you get bit, watch this, you won't have anything. How we doing? Come on, watch this. Let's read. It says here. It says, watch this. It says, this short-sightedness. Read with me. It says, this short-sightedness. What does it do? It disqualifies people from the real opportunity that Jesus slash generosity offers. See, when you're stingy and when you, when you refuse to be generous, you refuse to give. Give what? Am I talking? Every time. And the Holy Spirit keeps saying, he's disqualified because they keep thinking you're talking about money. And we're talking about giving everything, your time, your talent, your ability, your emotions. But when you refuse to do it, it actually disqualifies you from the opportunity that has been placed right in front of you. Is this blessing anybody? How are we, I'm almost done. I got five more minutes and I'm out of here. Let's read. It says what? It says when we eat. Come on, read with me. It says what? When we eat our seed. What is our seed? Our time. What is our seed? Our money. What is our seed? Our emotional intelligence. When we eat our seed, it says what? We face a future without a harvest. Are you hearing me? When you are stingy and you eat your seed, you are cursed. Hmm. Why am I cursed? Because now you ate your seed and now you face a future without a harvest because the seed was eaten and not sown. Are you hearing me? Oh, come on. And come on, Mark chapter 10, 24. I'm going to keep going. It says here, it says, and the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again, and he said unto them, children, how hard it is for them that, here we go, let's get right to the issue, that what? That trust in riches to enter into. The, it's hard, y'all. It's impossible. You, watch it. It's not even that you, you can't do it. Y'all hear me? You won't do it. You hear me? It's a choice. It's not, it's not something that you're not able to do. It's something because you, you, your heart got bit, and you're saying, uh-uh, I ain't doing it. I'm not going there. I'm not giving. I'm not tithing. I'm not offering. I'm not serving. I'm not loving. I'm not forgiving. No way. I'm not. I got bit. I ain't doing it. Let's read. Come on. It says here. here here's fox bite number two. We're out of here. Y'all ready? Fox bite number two. It says what? I trust my wealth. My time, my money, and my emotions more than I trust my God. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's read. It goes, it says here, it says, trusting in money over God. Here we go. I, I shared this a little bit last week. I'll probably share more and more every week we go along. But let's read. It says what? Trusting in money over God. Read with me. What is it? It's a, it's a, <coughs> achoo. It's a symptom. Come on, watch this. Trusting in money over God. It's a symptom of the demonic spirit called mammon. And we were just talking about it before the service started. That, and how many of you know people always say, you know, it's, the Bible say that the love of the Bible say that money is the root of all evil. That ain't what the Bible said. The Bible says that, no, money's not the root of all evil. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that money answers some problems. Come on, talk to me. How many, how many of y'all got some problems that money would answer? Come on. Amen. Right, Pastor Donald? You got some problems. Money, money would answer that. It's a tool. Watch this. It's, it, it's not the answer. It's a answer. Come on, talk to me. So, so but watch this. So, so money is not the root of all evil. The love 
of money is the root of all evil. And why, Pastor Ted, is the love of money the root of all evil? Because the love of money is called mammon. Mammon is a demonic spirit. And when Jesus, watch this here, let me show it to you. It says here, Matthew 6, 24. I, I got to show you the scripture because some of you have turned off. Because you got me. It says, doing? for he will either, can you turn down a little bit? For he'll either, read with me, he'll hate the one and he'll love the other. Read with me, here's Jesus talking. Or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and he, come on, read with me, he will despise and be against the other. See, how many of you know the reason why the rich young ruler left Jesus sad and dejected is because his fox got exposed. His God got exposed. His God was mammon. It wasn't the Lord. He ran to church. Watch this. But he walked home. <laughs> How many of you are supposed to run to church and run back? Come on. You're supposed to be excited and be more excited. But the problem was is God's relationship exposed his God. And so it says here, it says you're going to be devoted to one and you're going to despise and be against the other. It says here, come on, Jesus said it, read with me, what? You cannot serve God and mammon. He didn't say money. Money is not a God. Money is a thing. But watch this, but you can make it a God by serving, watch this, the spirit over money. <laughs> It's called mammon. Let's read. It says what? You cannot serve God and mammon. It, what, what is it? It says what? Deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever is trusted in. Come on, let's read. It says here. It says the spirit, when allowed to operate, will remain in your life long enough to fool and cause you to live stingy. Are you get, See, when you get bit. By this, by this fox, watch this. See, and, here, and here's the thing. See, see, he'll bite and keep biting. It's almost like this. Anybody ever ever get bit by, you're outside, you get bit by mosquitoes? If, if there are mosquitoes out, do you get bit by one? No. You get bit by as many that want to bite you. You want to know why? Because you're biteable. Oh, you didn't hear me. The, the reason why you got all them bites is because you're biteable. Ain't nothing on you that stops them from biting you. And so as long as you're biteable, you're going to get bit. And so watch this. That this spirit... When allowed to operate, it'll remain in your life long enough to fool you and cause you to live bitten, to live stingy. Come on, watch this. To live what? Read me. To live hoarding, to live driven. Oh, wait a second, Pastor Ted. I, I, I've got a strong drive. God don't drive. God leads. If you are being driven by something, you've been bitten by something. It said it'll cause you, let's back up, it'll cause you to hoard. Somebody say, oh, I have a collection. That ain't a collection. You're a hoarder. That ain't a collection. See, watch this. Collectors have things nice and neat. <laughs> Collectors have things all in their place. People who are hoarding, it's taking over their life. Is this making sense? See, collectors make room for stuff. Hoarding, watch this. You're happy to be in the room with what you're hoarding. It says here, you're hoarding, you're driven, you're fearful. Come on, here's, the, here's an important one. Here's a symptom. You are unsatisfied. I got you. Because this is called stingy. Are you happy now? We know you're not. It says, watch this. And come on, y'all read this with me. And what, what ultimately happens? You are ultimately broke with money. Oh, shut up. Did you know that stingy will drive you to hoard, will drive you to hold on, will drive you, watch this, to, to be all bound inside until when it's all over, you're broke and you got some money. See, see, see you can have stuff and still be broke. Because broke is not your bank account. Broke is your heart. How we doing? Come on, let's read. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. It says what? 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 You are never, read me, you are never truly rich until you're whole. But when you're broke, you ain't whole, so you'll never be rich. Is this making sense? Come on, we're done. It says what? When we learn to trust in God instead of ourselves and see generosity as an opportunity instead of a loss, watch this, we will bite the fox that bit us and live the life that God promised. Is anybody ready to bite back today? Come on, come on, come on. I, I, gave, you two, I gave you two bites. I'm going to give you some more bites, but I gave you, I gave you enough to bite back. 
I gave you enough to say, I see where that joker's been biting me now. I, 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 I see why I'm biteable. Come on, to, see, when you're not biteable, then you can start biting. Come on, here we go. We're done. Galatians 6, uh, 7 through 9, and we're done. Hey, why don't y'all in the, in the live studio audience, somebody give me some music. Some of you are at home, just stand up for a second. Let's read this last scripture together, because let's get this in our heart, because today's the day that I decided I, I'm not going to let him bite me. See, because here's the reality, and, and here's, here's the worst part about being stingy is you know it. Y'all hear me? Stingy people know they're stingy. Somebody who's been bitten knows I, I got bites. See, and oftentimes what we do when we got bites, we try to hide them. You know what you hide them with? With your stuff. <laughs> you didn't hear me. Come on, you, you try to cover up your bite marks with the things you have, but you know you're really Stingy. Come on, Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 7 through 9, and, and we're out of here. Come on, let's read. It says here, it says what? Do not what? Come on, guys. Y'all know this scripture. Now let's read it in the context. Be, do, be, do not be deceived. Give me some music. And deluded and misled. It says what? God will not allow himself to be sneered at or what? Or scorned or disdained or mocked. See, here's what you got to understand, that God's laws are his laws. God, God, God's principles are his principles. And guess what? You can, you can try and live some other way, but you want to know what God calls it? You're deceived. Come on, let's read. It says, watch here. It says, by mere pretensions or professions or by his precepts being set aside. See, when we try to set aside his precepts, when we try to set aside his laws, we try to set aside what love has prepared, it's because you got bit. Come on, let's read. It says here, it says he inevitably, read me, deludes himself who attempts to delude God. It says, here we go, for whatever a man or a woman sows, that and that what? And that what? What's that word? Always. That and that what? Always. That and that only is what he's going to or she's going to reap. In other words, are you saying that if I sow money, I'm going to get money back? No, uh -uh, that's not what I'm saying because that's not true. Uh-oh, let's crack some of your faces. This is not a lottery. This is not a slot machine. Come on, can, can, can I help you? And if people have been telling you if you sow $100, $100 you're going to get $1,000 back, the devil's a liar. That's not biblical. God may bless you financially, but even greater, he'll bless you with peace. He'll bless you with favor. See, in other words, it's saying, it says in whatever a man sows, how many of you know that whatever, wherever your heart and what you give is connected, then it becomes seed. Y'all not hearing me? Because I can have money or I can have a car or I can have my time. And if I, if I give it with the right heart, now it's seed. If I give it with the wrong heart, I'm tipping. You ain't sowing. You actually throwing. But look here, it says what? For whatever a man sows, that and that only is what they'll reap. So watch this. So watch this. You sow from your heart and you reap from your heart. Is this making sense? It says what? For he who sows to his own flesh, lower nature and sensuality will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. And that's why there's people right now in churches that are church hurt because the pastor said, you know what? Well, well God is a, God, God, God is a, uh, a prosperity God. Now, now God believes believes in prosperity, but he says, as your soul prospers, so shall you prosper. So y'all like, y'all get, come on, don't get it twisted. And some of you are so mad because you're like, I gave a thousand and I have nothing now. Well, you want to know why? Because that person taught you to give expecting that you're going to get what you, what, this ain't a slot machine. If I give, I'm going to get this back. No, 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 no. I give because I already have. Oh, you didn't hear me. I give because I already have, and watch this, and whatever comes in return is the blessing. It says, for he who sows to his own flesh, his lower nature, his, his sensuality will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. I'm done. It says, but he who sows to the, oh, come on, to the slot machine, to, to, to the cookie monster. Come on. No, but he who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap life and eternal. It says here, and let us not, come on, guys. Don't lose your heart. You don't lose your heart when you give with a right heart. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint and acting nobly and doing what's right. Why? For in the due time and at the appointed season, we might. Is that what it says? We may. That ain't what it says. 
It says we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage. That's in your heart and faith. Come on, Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. You could be seated. We thank you, or you could stand. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for finding the hole where the fox that's been biting me has lived. I found out today, God, that there are areas where I don't trust you. There are areas where I don't believe you. There are areas where I think giving means losing. There are areas where I believe, Father God, that if I trust you, God, that I'm going to lose. And I thank you today for exposing the fox. I thank you today, Lord, for inviting us into your a relationship, God, where you are able to be our source, where you're able to be our master, where you're able to be our provider. And we are set free from the bondage of mammon and idol worshiping. And we're able to trust you freely to receive and to give and to live. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Did you get anything out of the word of God today? Hallelujah. Well, come on. I want to talk.